Hey guys, what's up? It's 8-Bit Eric. Today we are going to take a look at, review, and figure out if it is worth buying Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch. Skyrim is an open world RPG game that has you exploring caves, dungeons, the wilderness. It's so big. It is so huge. And it's one of the greatest games of all time. It's been platformed, PC gamed, modded, pretty much everywhere. Six years down the road, it's still being talked about, still selling great. It's finally on the Switch. Is it worth paying $59.99 to get the game one more time? Let's find out in today's review. So Skyrim, six years later, somehow manages to still be relevant. One of the most popular and talked about games of all time. And just recently... As last year, we had the remastered version, which came out on PS4 and Xbox One, which I had the Xbox One version and enjoyed it. Played the hell out of it. That was the first time I ever played Skyrim. I missed out on it on the first go-around. Now it's out on the Switch, and I got a review copy of it. And I even went out and bought my own, because I am a Skyrim fanatic. That's how much I adore this game. So now we're also getting a VR version and there was a PS4 and Xbox One release in addition to the Switch. So Skyrim is everywhere. People are wondering what's the best version to get. Well, I'm going to be completely upfront and honest. If you're looking for the most graphically pleasing and most visually good looking game of Skyrim out there, it's not the Nintendo Switch version. It doesn't take Dick Tracy or a detective to tell you that much. Going in with the Nintendo Switch version, the main gimmick is that it's Skyrim on the go. You could have your 4K Skyrim with mods and extra good looking visuals and stuff. That's more than understandably. I mean, if you're going to play Skyrim and you want to have it be the best visually looking game, then go get that. If you want to have Skyrim to play it on the go, there's no other way to do it than on the Switch. Sure, you can get a laptop, but then you have to have a charger, you have to have a mouse. It's not as efficient as just having a gamepad, picking it up, pushing power, and playing it on the go. You can play Skyrim anywhere easily on the Nintendo Switch. There's a lot of newbies, especially Nintendo people, that have only played Nintendo consoles. And I, honestly, there's not much you could say about Skyrim that has not been already said. You play as a character that is revealed to be a dragonborn, which is basically somebody that has powers that can take the souls of dragons. You're set to be executed at the beginning of the game. You escape, and then you have to go on a big, huge quest to discover your powers, your potential, and to help save the world of Skyrim. It's one of the Elder Scrolls games. It takes place 200 years past the last game before that. And it features a huge amount of open world exploration like no other game had at the time. In 2011, Skyrim was very innovative. In 2017, while it is fun, it kind of is starting to show its age. Especially when it comes to how NPCs interact. How they look kind of soulless when you're talking to them how everything glitches, how pop-in textures happen, how the game overall just feels like it's aging. It's on the cusp of being a really outdated engine and they just managed to keep adding on a lot of things to keep people coming back. With the Switch version, as I mentioned, the main selling point is the portable mode, but there's also some new options. All the DLC up to this point is included already. So all the options that you have for questing and everything is here. It's a full-fledged Skyrim game all on one little Nintendo Switch cart, which is impressive. You have to admit it, all hardware issues aside, the fact that they were able to even fit Skyrim on a tiny little micro SD game cart for the Nintendo Switch in itself is pretty impressive. And the game actually does not run bad. I know the main concern from people is... How does it run and is it good? Is it worth buying? Undocked version of Skyrim, portably on the go, stays 30 frames per second in 720p on the tiny screen. It runs smoothly and it looks lovely on the handheld screen. And even though the text can be small while playing it, overall the game 
is impressive when it's on the go. This is probably the most definitive version of Skyrim in my opinion because none of the other platforms offer the idea of taking it on the go. There's also newly introduced motion controls, of course, because it's Nintendo. Luckily, these are optional, but wagging the Joy-Con will swing melee weapons. If you use your shield Joy-Con, the left hand, it'll raise it. You can push forward to attack. You could swing your melee weapon. There's even some fine tuning as far as regards of lock picking and even using your bone arrow. This probably has to be the best controlling bone arrow mechanics on a game using motion controls, period. Yes, it's awesome. It's pretty neat having to be able to aim using your, lo your left Joy-Con, pulling back and shooting, no problem at all. But motion controls are gimmicky. I'm not a big fan of them, but I will say they're not bad on Skyrim, but I opt out to play with the Pro Controller no matter what. That, in my opinion, is the way to go. Docked, the game is 1080p, 30 frames per second, and it does feature a lot of texture popping. Like, you'll be walking and something will pop up all of a sudden. And the game did glitch out on me a few times. Not a lot. It wasn't unplayable. Very frustrating, but let's be honest here. What version of Skyrim did not have glitches or issues when it comes to how the game ran every once in a while? I will say the Switch version, it looks a lot better than what it sounds like, and it plays a lot better than what it sounds like. It's, it's not as inferior as people seem to get the picture of. Sure, as I said, it's not 4K gaming, it's not PC gaming. Graphically wise, you can't expect that on the Nintendo Switch, which leads back to the argument of it's portable. This is for the people that want Skyrim portably. If, I, I'm acknowledging it. It's not the best looking Skyrim, but it plays fantastic. I mean, if you're playing your games on the Nintendo Switch, you can't go in expecting 4K graphics. It's it's a compromise that is made, however, it's a very small compromise when you look at the fact that they were able to get the game to work on the console itself, if that makes any sense. The other big addition is the use of Amiibo. The selling point in the trailer was that you could use Legend of Zelda Amiibo to unlock Breath of the Wild gear to make your character decked out in Link's tunic using his shield and the Master Sword. It's really cool for us Nintendo fans out there to be able to I guess explore the world of Skyrim wearing the Link outfit and the items are actually able to be found without amiibos as well although it might take a little bit longer. You can use each amiibo once per day. It doesn't always guarantee that you will get Zelda gear. Sometimes it might be a random chest with our arrows or random armor, different items, food, things of that nature. But it was a nice little thing that they added to the game and it's completely optional. I know people think amiibos are kind of like microtransaction DLC, but that's not really the case when it comes to Skyrim. If you've never played Skyrim before, now is a great time to. Skyrim is easily one of the highest rated open world RPGs ever released, and it's no small feat to have Skyrim playable on the go. As I mentioned, it's the full Skyrim experience, including all the DLC, plus the ability to take it portably and amiibo function, most control. It's a complete package in my opinion. Other than it being inferior graphic wise, it's the most definitive version of Skyrim out there. It's gonna be tough to top this. Skyrim on the Switch does not support mods at launch and it probably never will. And that might be a big no selling point because a lot of people support mods on you know Bethesda games like Fallout, Skyrim, if there's no mods on here, that takes out a lot of, I guess, the fun and interest for this game. And I'm I'm sorry, the game is still great without mods. I know a lot of those PC game out, gamers out there demand those mods to do certain stuff like graphical modifications and to make the game work and look certain ways. But come on. Yeah, it might be a little bit of a step above vanilla Skyrim, but it's still a great game. It's still Skyrim at the end of the day. It all leads back to the fact that they were able to make such a great, huge, engrossing game of Skyrim to be easily accessible anywhere you go on the Nintendo Switch. And with that, I say Skyrim is definitely a buy. If you own it already or you have other platforms that you can get it cheaper, then by all means, go enjoy your 
part out over there. But if you're looking for a game that provides the best single multiplayer experience on the Nintendo Switch, even better than Breath of the Wild, I'm a Zelda fan, but let's be honest here, it might be graphically inferior, but it's the best gameplay experience you can get out on the Nintendo Switch, then by all means, please go get Skyrim. And well guys, that's it for today's review. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're new to the channel, please leave a subscription, hit that like button, comment below, and I'll see you soon. Thanks guys.